Well, do you think that this is a trend that's going to continue? I mean, are we going to see more referendums throughout the, the world where, you know, different sections of nations will start breaking off due to the will of the people, essentially? Uh, yes, I do. I think it's a trend that is a result of globalization. People want more control over their own affairs, and they think that having their own state is a way to achieve that. I'm not convinced it is, to be honest, um, because it's the state itself that's the problem, not having your own state. It's mm-hmm. the state. Um, and actually, the way to get more control is to have government in your own hands. And there's, in fact, a contrast. Uh, Catalan nationalism stands to a degree is distinct from an anarchist vision of, of self-governance in Catalonia or anywhere, uh, because it's quite a top-down system of government in Catalonia. The nationalist uh, Puigdemont, the current president, and his predecessor, conventional middle-of-the-road road politicians, they're now anarchists. Um, mm-hmm. And at the same time as all of this going on, the mayor of Barcelona has been trying to implement uh, a much uh, more creative and uh, interesting vision of shared government inside Barcelona of, of people te- participating in discussions about their own government. And that's got no attention whatsoever. And in many ways, that's a much more radical vision of the future, a one, one that interests me much more. And I think some anarchists yeah. and some people on the left in Catalonia are quite ambivalent about nationalism. Because the trouble yeah. is, it, a new state in Europe in the contemporary circumstance, what does that actually mean? I mean, Catalonia has said it would be part of the EU. That means 99% of its laws are already written. Um, you know, you would have sovereignty only of only over a tiny part of the actual laws um, that governed your circumstances. So very, very little would change um, if you yeah. remain part of the EU. Uh, so what does actually separation mean in that circumstance? Mm-hmm. Uh are you really regaining sovereignty? You're actually not in any meaningful way. It's about something else. So what is it about? Is it about identity? Right. Is it about our place in the world? What is it about? And I think one of the things that frustrates me in Catalonia was that this wasn't really brought out into the open. You know, it was all just there was this endless attempt to have a vote. And I think politicians were quite scared about having that debate more fully because I think it would have undermined their vision of what politics was mm-hmm. about. If yeah, you see what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I guess, it, you know, like you had gone over, you know, what does this actually mean? You know, especially considering it would be a part of the European Union, you know, would it actually be a real sovereign state at that point? And and I think that that's, of course, a, the sort of fracturing, if you will, of these sort of nations. I mean, in a certain sense, it's happening, not not to that degree, but it's sort of happening here within the United States. I mean, um, there's always been talk of, various segments of the United States breaking off from the Union. Um, you know, California apparently is thinking about it. It sort of has its own mod. It, it, it's really quite a fascinating discussion here in the United States as well. But um, <clears throat> but for, for me, it almost feels uh, it's a symbolic thing. So obviously, in, in, you know, like you discussed, it, it, it may not be the most practical route at this in the short term, but it, it's obviously... I mean, if you look at it in the long term, I mean, where would this be leading, right? I mean, obviously, you're talking about how the state itself is the problem. You know, government, as we understand Mm -hmm. it, is the problem. I think that maybe the more local the governments are, the more they'll begin to maybe eventually evolve into something that we could call anarchism or direct democracy in some fashion. Do you think that that's a realistic, uh, uh, I don't know, assessment? that I've just made or is that yeah, yeah I do I, I think that's true I mean I think the smaller the country the better the democracy mm-hmm. um, you look at the successful modern democracies they're little places like Switzerland and Singapore mm-hmm. or Iceland or Norway or Denmark um, there's a lot of social cohesion in these places a lot of consensus about the way forward um, and a kind of intimacy with politics Whereas in the States, you've got this ludicrous situation where a tiny number of people have power over 300 million others. Mm -hmm. You know, it's absolutely absurd that that would possibly work. Britain is not a million miles off that. In Scotland, for instance, you know, there's a really different feel about the Scottish government and its relationship to its people than there is with the British government uh, and the relationship to all the British people. You know, there isn't a closeness. There isn't a proximity. And I think the, the, 
the bigger the distance between government and its people, the worse the problems, the mm-hmm. bigger the disillusionment of the population with that. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, always bringing government closer to the people, if that means smaller states. I mean, I would get, break them down, keep making them smaller and smaller and smaller until they don't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. That would be my view. But yeah. I do think there's going to be more and more. There's not going to be less. I mean, there's currently 193 member states of the United Nations, and I, I, I think it will be 200, you know, within 10 years and probably 240 within 50 years, something like that, mm-hmm. uh, and 300 beyond that if, if we get that far, if the UN survives that long. Um, but that's the trend, is for smaller states, and I think ultimately I, I yeah, approve of yeah, that. I think-